Um, this is a question from John Otto. Mm -hmm. So, if you guys haven't gone to his, his channel, he has some videos up. Uh, I went to his channel, I really like him. Uh, I think you guys should check it out. He's got some interesting perspectives. And uh, really, uh, really like this guy. So, go check him out. Anyway, um, it's John Otto, O-T-T-O, -T -T -O, okay? All right, so he writes, I want to know, is the beans outside the game truly loving, or is love just a fake emotion? Okay, let's stop there for a minute. Okay, wait a minute. It seems whether gecko or pigeon, their love is really superstitious and fake. All right, let's stop there. Okay. When you, <clears throat> yeah, well, you're right. The pigeons and the geckos know what humans want. <clears throat> what humans want is we want to feel where we came from. No matter if you're a long-term human or a starseed, long-term, short-term, medium-term human, play in the game in human form, or just temporarily here as a starseed to, to uh, assist Gaia. Whichever way you came for, when you get here in whatever percentage of amnesia you're in there isn't a longing for where we came from <clears throat> because the things here are really foreign to us now to a, a human especially a long-term human <clears throat> they've gotten used to it because they've been in the game for so long so many lives but for someone who has not been here very long we really miss um, home we really miss where we came from and when I say where we come from and there is love, this is difficult because, as I said in the video that I'm putting up at the same time I did this, love in human terms can mean a lot of different kinds of love. There's love for your kids, there's love for your job, there's love of money, there's love of pizza, there's love of your mate. Um, there's all kinds of loves. <laughs> all different kinds of loves. And... They all use the same word for it. Um, none of those things, by the way, on this planet so far that I've seen people use or do are what I consider love. And what I consider love is unconditional love, truly unconditional love. It is where you love all things, everyone, everything, no matter what, under any circumstance. That's truly unconditional love. I do not see that here. Um, and that's when, when you realize that we're all one and this is a game, it's really easy to do unconditional love. It's really easy to do that. But there's so much gameplay here. There's so many divisions, so many fractals that they've tagged a lot of things love. Like they really don't love pizza. You like pizza a lot. Uh, you don't love pizza. <laughs> or... It needs to go the other way. Or you love pizza just like you love your mate and just like you love your child. Either it's all-encompassing, unconditional love of everything, or you got to be a little bit clearer in the words that you use because how you feel about the person you say, I do too, and supposedly say you're going to live the rest of your life with until death do you part is not the same thing as enjoying a slice of pizza. I mean, those are just completely different things. And, and again, human words and the way people use them are make it very difficult to communicate with people, especially from my perspective. So when you go outside of the game, what we would say if we were talking to each other using human terms, we would say the word love in a very, very... A different way into very different com uh, conversations and it well we wouldn't talk at all but there would be an understanding of a very deep um, unconditional love towards everything everybody and everything even though on the other side it's we don't use terms like everybody and everything it's just the all that is every part of the all that is we love and we love it totally and completely. There's no judgment. You don't look and see what people are doing in games that they're playing and judge them for that. There is no 
there's total acceptance in that love and very definitely no judgment that's bizarre to us to even think about judging another being in their creationary process and in their experience that would never even that would never even come up that's all a part of this game all a part of this game now that's the first part of your question which is on the other side outside the game is love real absolutely i can absolutely use the term love Outside of this game, it is unconditional love, and it is phenomenal. But I didn't feel it so much as uh, something that I got, but more something that went away. Things that went away when I went to the other side. Like, um, things were cleared away, like judgment and of myself and others, and worry, and um, pressure, and... Um, all that kind of stuff. That was removed, and when that were all removed, then I could see everything and appreciate everything and be appreciated by everything for the truly unique aspects that we all are. And so it became um, more a relief than some, I think, NDE people say it was overwhelming love that took their breath away. That isn't the way it happened with me. It was more relief, oh, more relief, oh, more relief. And the relief all went away with all those things. And what was left over was this unconditional love that was home. That was, well, of course. So for me, that's the direction I went with it. I didn't uh, go out of body and get plopped right in the middle of this unconditional love and go <gasps> like that. It wasn't like that. I gradually went from here up, taking things away, and ended up very comfortably where I knew was home, where I normally am. And when I was there, this whole experience, everything about this experience, was teeny tiny. It was just one teeny, teeny tiny experience, and I uh, remembered everything else that was my experience, as well as everything else's experience. Okay? So, now, this, the next part is it seems like the geckos and the pigeons that there are really superstitious and fake. Well, absolutely. In the fourth dimension, the geckos and the pigeons know that humans are searching, wanting, desire, longing for love. And the love that has been around in the third dimension in these lower levels of fourth dimension is very very iffy love. It's very conditional love. It's very fragile. It's easy to break. Um, uh, in a relationship, it doesn't take much for you to break that love. And most people that have been in a relationship, and certainly through a divorce and a marriage, well, they know how fragile that kind of love is. Um, same thing is true with parental love, children's love for adults, love of uh Music can change easily and quickly. Everything about the love that most humans know about, it's very, very fragile. It doesn't stick around, and people are... I have not seen one person that knows how to do unconditional unconditional love. Not one. Um, there's always conditions to it. Always. So, from that perspective, the geckos and the humans who are... I mean, the geckos and the pigeons that are higher vibration, knowing where the humans are in that love spectrum of how much that they've seen. If you put conditional love at the bottom and unconditional love at where we come from, they know that we're like, you know, unconditional, I mean, unconditional love is a 10, conditional love in 3D lower levels is a 1. We are about at a 3 or maybe 2.5 right now. Well, the pages and the geckos know that, so they just step in with like a 5 or 6, and show up looking how you expect them to look and shower you with a five or six and people hit their knees and follow the geckos and the pigeons like mad because it feels so much better than the love that we have had so far that they think that that's as good as it gets uh, even though it's still very much a conditional love it's just a much or high, much higher vibrational um, con conditional love they still will say, follow me, and you can have this love, but you have to follow me to get this love. So people follow them because it feels so good. It is um, one of their best ways of getting 
um, entities to follow them in the fifth dimension. Uh, fourth dimension, I'm sorry. Okay? So that's the answer to that one. And let's see what else he says. Um, all right. Then he goes on and he says, I also want to know, are there gods out there that are truly good or true, truly evil or truly good in nature? Okay, well, the only place that you have good or evil or even the perspective of good and evil is in this game. Uh, I don't, and I've scanned a bunch of places out there, way more than you can possibly imagine. This is the only place that has good and evil. And the reason why it has good and evil is because of the dualistic creationary process that was put into play. Now, what is good and evil? All right, we, I was just talking, laughing about this. We were laughing about this. I think last night, because it's like, okay, what's good and evil? Well, right now, in today's society, in America anyway, and, and I think a lot of the world, it is evil to make a child work. Absolutely evil. That is an evil thing to do. A hundred years ago, it was common for making, to make children work. <laughs> It was very common. It was it was necessary. They worked uh, in out here in the in Texas on farms and yeah, they worked hard. Um, all the families, members of the families, did. They worked in factories. Now I understand that in parts some parts of the world, um, children are still working in factories. Okay, does that make the people who don't have children working good? And the ones that do have children working evil? And if so, does that mean that everybody who accepted child labor 100, 200, however many years ago it was, does that mean that they were all evil then? According to them, they weren't. There wasn't anything wrong with it. They accepted it as a good thing. It was fine then. So these kinds of things, in when it comes to human history, change all the time. It changes all the time. If you think for one minute when countries go to war that one side, one country believes that they're good and the other believes that they're evil, um, I think that you haven't read enough world history. Both sides believe that they're the good guys and that they should win. Okay, absolutely. But things change. The rules change in this dualistic gameplay that's what keeps it interesting that's what keeps it exciting that's why beans come back and experience this creationary game so often is because the rules change all the time they're always changing who is the good guy today will be the bad guy tomorrow in history what is whoever well they say the the winner writes the the history books and that's true and they make them the good guys so whoever wins is the good guy. So a lot of times what that translates as is whoever wins is good, whoever loses is bad. Now that's absolutely not true at all. And then on some things that they go, well, good guys finish last. Go figure. And then in movies, the good guys usually always win. But then the saying is, good guys finish last. You see the confusion here in all of this? So, are there gods who are believed within the game to be good and evil? Yes. But different people will call them good and different people will call them evil. And that's true right now. Let's just take the two that are the most known in America. There is Jehovah God and there is Satan. Okay? Right now, that's the two That's the two ones that you've got. You've got Jehovah God and you've got Satan. All right, Christians believe that Jehovah God is the good guy and Satan is the bad guy. But people who follow um, Satan believe that God is the bad guy and Satan is the good guy. So, who's right? Who's right? Okay, and I would hold true that they're both right that whatever game they came to choose and and came to experience and whichever 
being they would like to follow and say that the good guy is a valid game for them and and well done them and enjoy your experience from a, the perspective outside the game all of it's good all of it's good it's just like um watching a really good play a really good movie okay uh i've said this before the beans the people who are playing the role of the bad guys and the good guys when they come out of playing the movie or the play that does not mean that they are the, a good guy or a bad guy it just simply means they were playing the role of a good guy or a bad guy the same thing is true here whatever being is playing whatever role good guy or bad guy in your eyes in somebody else's eyes it may be flipped and it probably is that's what causes people to have so much conflict is disagreeing upon what is good and what is bad what is right what is wrong these terms have been thrown around like it's a given well everybody knows what's right and everybody knows what's wrong and they say that like it's these are clear-cut clear-cut things but they're simply not they're not. People go to court all the time for killing people for a judge and jury to decide what kind of killing that was. Let's say that you were drunk and you were driving a car and you hit a car and you killed somebody. That's killing somebody. Is that right or wrong? Well, and what level of right or wrong? According to the law, it's not as wrong to kill that person as it is to go in your house, make a plan, or draw up a map, go buy a gun, set a date, watch the person, get ready, go in there and shoot them. That that's more wrong. And then a whole nother thing is if you're in the military and you work for the for you work for this country and you're here to to protect us and you are sent by your general to go over somewhere and line up in a row or get in an airplane and shoot somebody and kill them, that that's not wrong at all. That that's honorable. As a matter of fact, it's brave. It's heroic. Okay, these are all different ways, and there's just a few of them. There's many, 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 many more ways that one person can kill another person, but it's translated as to good, to really, really good, to really, really bad depending upon the circumstances. The problem is that those circumstances are always changing, depending upon what society you're in, what belief you're in, whatever. There were many societies where, um, no, it wasn't that long ago, where, where letting your kid die, like you have a baby and it's deformed, that it was understood and accepted if you put that baby outside and let it die in the, in the weather, because it was the best thing for everybody involved because the tribe or village or whatever could not support a, a child that was deformed that was accepted there was nothing wrong with it now if you were to put if you put a baby in a dumpster and walk away from it and they catch you you're in big 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 trouble see everybody says oh these these rules are simple they're not simple. They're very, very complex whenever you look at human and human's nature and how they change. And they change very rapidly. And that's, an, and that's a very extreme uh, belief system on what's good and what's bad that I'm putting forth here. But it goes down to the most intricate, simple things like, um, like the word gay, for instance. When I was growing up, gay really meant being happy. We use the term all the time. Now gay means homosexual. And there's, those are not even in the same ballpark. You know, I, I have no idea even how gay, happy-go-lucky got to be gay, homosexual. I don't even know how that happened. But it happened in my lifetime in front of me. And the word completely is used a completely different way now. I... How, how did that happen? Who decided that? Was there a memo I missed? And that happens all the time. And so you, you cannot say that this is good and this or bad because it depends upon the person. It depends upon their history. It depends upon their state of mind. There are serial killers that kill people because they believe they're supposed to, that it's a good thing, that they're being honorable by by taking out a certain kind of person 
from their perspective, it is a good thing. From society's perspective, it's a bad thing. You can play this game all day long, but playing that game, guys, is what keeps people separated and mad at each other. The second you understand how complex this is and how different people's lives and their experience and what they came for and what their belief systems are, and you understand that the game is about that, you can either lean into the game that you played as the good guy or the bad guy, or you can pull back and watch the show and not judge anyone and understand it's just a show. It is an extremely good virtual reality video game or, if that doesn't suit you, a very good um, play that you have a role in. Or, a really good movie where you are playing either a lead role or an extra. Okay? That's how this plays out. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, let's see what else he says. Um, let's see... Is someone like Hillary Clinton only evil as it seems while in the human body? Well, um, again, that goes back to, uh, yeah, do I think Hillary Clinton is playing an evil role? Absolutely, I do. I know who she hangs with in most of the timelines where I am. But does Hillary Clinton consider herself evil? I'm sure not. I'm, not, I'm sure not. Those people that she hangs out with, that she works with, they totally believe that their way is the right way. They absolutely believe that they would do a better job of running everybody if, if we just let them run everything. That's why they do what they do. They believe that they're doing the right thing. So, in her mind, she's not evil. Now, from outside the game, n nobody's evil. They're just different. They're just playing different roles of the dualistic game. And they come in contrast with each other. Humans call it good and evil. We would probably on the outside look in and say just different experiences that are on different sides of the dualistic creationary game. That they're just playing opposite, uh, opposites of each other in order to get the contrast to play the game. A fun game. A competitive game. That's that whole competitive thing. Outside this game we're not competitive at all. We don't even know what that means. So the whole competitive thing and winning somebody over or pushing it and making somebody do your way or um, convincing them to do it your way, all of that stuff we don't do on the other side at all, ever. Okay, then he goes into, is Hitler in his true self outside the game a true loving being or are all gods different in regards to moral standards? All gods within the fourth dimension and below, as you identify them as gods, as you create, as humans create gods in all the ways that they've created gods, they are lo as loving as you create them to be, as evil as you create them to be. That's up to the humans and what they want to experience. Outside the game... All of us are a part of the all that is, and we're all gods, and absolutely uh, nothing but unconditionally loving. Nothing. No, nothing but. Um, it's only within the game that there is the illusion of what you consider evil and good. Um, your idea of good isn't even close to what we would consider good outside the game. It's very fraught with... Um, it's very conditional. <laughs> it's very conditional. So, uh, even people's idea of what good and bad is, it's so bizarre. And it's so, yeah, it's so weird. It's so weird. Um, like, uh, somebody who goes out and does good, and I was one of these people. Somebody that goes out and does good because it makes them feel good is not unconditionally good. If you go out and do good things and nobody knows you're doing them, then you're a lot closer to what I would consider true good. Goodness. Uh, but most people don't do that. Most people, their goodness, um, people know about it. And that's important to them. It makes them feel good. It made me feel good uh, to help people as a nurse. Yeah, it totally did. You know, And I told people that. I said, uh, 
don't pat me on the back. I'm doing this because it makes me feel good. I was very aware of it, and I was very verbal about it. Okay, so is that truly good? Ultimately, I've got to go out and find people that are miserable. I've got to go find jobs where they're miserable. I've got to create a world where people are miserable so that I can make them feel better so I could feel good. Is that ultimately good? I don't know, guys. You tell me. I know my, I have my feelings on the matter. Okay. On how that plays out. Alright, so... I think that answers everything that John asked on that question. Or that comment. Alright, that's it. This is kind of a long one. So let's end it there. Love you guys. Huge hugs. See you later. Bye now.